Psychic Guru has been reporting on Qualcomm's Orion processor, which has been named as Snapdragon X Elite, for many months now. And with Computex just a few weeks away, we have some updates. Before we get into the updates, let's give you a quick refresher on Snapdragon X Elite. We know Qualcomm as a producer of chips for mobile phones and other mobile devices, but Snapdragon X Elite will be used in what they call PCs and what we call laptops. These are Windows laptops running on ARM. And the news today, which we will come to, is that in addition to X Elite, there will also be processors called X Plus. We can think of X Elite as gold and X Plus as silver. So here's a quick refresher on the X Elite. Fabricated on a four nanometer process by TSMC, there are 12 cores inside X Elite. And two of these cores can boost up to 4.3 gigahertz. Fast memory access is very important to Snapdragon X. And in the first instance, the memory will be very fast LPDDR5X. On the face of it, Snapdragon X looks very promising, and there's no denying the list of partners making laptops using this chip is impressive. Microsoft Surface is significant as a partner because the way that Windows 11 works on Snapdragon X will be absolutely critical. And here we see a specification chart for Snapdragon X Elite detailing the CPU, the GPU, and the NPU, which is the engine that handles AI workloads. As we headed to MWC, or Mobile World Congress, earlier this year, Qualcomm released further information about the performance of Snapdragon X, and they told us about different reference designs and the power levels at which they would run, and their claims about performance against Intel and AMD were bold, to say the least. However, now we have updated information from a briefing in April, where they're pitching their product head-to-head -head against first the Apple M3, and then the Intel Core or Ultra 7155H, or Meteor Lake, and also the fastest Meteor Lake, the Core Ultra 9185H. You will note that AMD's Ryzen 9 7940HS also gets a mention in the charts. At Qualcomm's London event, we were up high and had a magnificent view across London, which was a very pleasing start to the day. We then had a tour of a room where there was a series of laptops running benchmarks, However, these are reference design laptops, so we cannot tell whether they have any relation to finished examples. All we can focus on here is the processes inside those laptops and the performance in the benchmarks that we saw. Kit Guru is with Qualcomm at the Gherkin in London, and we're looking at some laptops. Let's start over here. <laughs> where we have a series of laptops running the X Elite, which is the 12 core product. These laptops are all familiar to anybody that saw some earlier Qualcomm demos going back as far as November of 2023. So it's a 12 core product running native Windows 11. That's a significant point. And we see a series of benchmarks that are familiar to us. So Procyon, Cinebench 24, speedometer to show how fast your browser opens, and a nice pretty desktop. These are all the same. However, next to those four laptops, we have the X Plus, which at the time of recording is under NDA. In about two weeks time, we can talk more about it officially. This is a 10 core product, so therefore very similar. 10 twelfths of the Elite, however running slightly slower and without the two core boost, and it has slightly inferior graphics, but fundamentally the same processor so about 10% slower than the Elite about 10% faster than Intel and AMD also Apple M3 but as you can see the chassis tells us very little it's a full-size laptop we we may well see laptops like this in production but we will certainly see thin and lights as well and across the room we can see me, we can see Dominic, and we can see some very poor uh, voice to text translation. Actually, now it's quietened down, it's not so bad. All right, I want to see someone very unique. Has to be said, it doesn't like background sound. And here we see Baldur's Gate, and we've seen a demo running at 30 FPS. 
not great, but better than we'd expect from integrated graphics. And now I'm going to cut to the studio and I'm going to show you some slides from this event. It was Qualcomm's briefing that was the main event of the day. We were first refreshed about Snapdragon X Elite and then we were told about Snapdragon X Plus. This has been rumoured for quite some while, however it was the first time we had official confirmation there'd be a stack of both high and mid-range chips in the Snapdragon X range. And we see from Qualcomm's slides that the X Elite is a 12-core processor with a base speed of 3.8 GHz, while the X Plus is a 10-core processor running at 3.4 GHz. It's understood those 10 cores don't boost in speed, so the 3.4 GHz is fixed. Naturally, we asked whether the Elite and the Plus Silicon were two different chips or the same chip with some parts disabled, and we were told Plus might be the same chip as Elite, but we're not committing to that. As we walked around the room of laptops, we had to check the signage to be certain whether we were looking at a 10 or 12 core part in action because the performance looked by eye to be very similar. There is, however, some notable differences in the benchmark results. While there are significant differences in some of the benchmarks, other results are rather closer than we'd expect. For example, in PC Mark 10, the X Elite 12 core scores just about 13,000 points, where the 10 core X Plus scores between 12.5 and 12.8 thousand, essentially the same. There's a wider separation in Geekbench 6.2, where the 12 core Elite is scoring 2,800, while the 10 core Plus is scoring 2,400. It seems to us the separation between the Elite and the Plus is very small. Of much more interest to our eyes is how Snapdragon X compares to the competition. Looking first at Geekbench Multithread, Qualcomm comes out ahead of both Intel and AMD, not only in terms of the score, but significantly in terms of power draw. This is true for both the CPU and the GPU, and Qualcomm's claims for battery life are absolutely stellar. You have to wonder whether retail laptops will have longer battery life than we're used to seeing, or simply pack a smaller battery and save on weight to achieve the same battery life. This chart of launch speed of applications is significant. We have to remember that running Windows on ARM has sometimes been a bit fraught. Qualcomm is keen to point out that apps are running very well on this particular version of Windows. They are also keen to point out that they have the beatings they claim of Apple. We can understand that Qualcomm taking the fight to Apple M3 is a big move because this is ARM versus ARM, although obviously on different operating systems. And the result is that Qualcomm is claiming the win against all comers in mobile form. They claim the win in Geekbench, beating the competition both in terms of performance and also in terms of power draw, and the same they claim is true in Cinebench 2024. Also their integrated graphics they claim have the beating of both Intel and AMD. And when it comes to the NPU, Qualcomm says they simply have no competition when it comes to AI workloads. Qualcomm made a number of points about the laptops that will use Snapdragon X, whether Elite or Plus. They're claiming incredible graphics with multi-monitor display support, but they're also talking about very fast connectivity and very high quality cameras. When you consider the types of cameras we get in smartphones, this is not such a big claim, and it suggests that video calls on laptops are gonna take a leap forward compared to what we currently see, which is sometimes 720p and at best 1080p. And we also have expectations that Qualcomm will deliver on Snapdragon Sound, which should also raise the bar across the piece. It's worth noting that previously Qualcomm had said nothing about the model names for the various processors. It had just been Snapdragon X Elite. And we're now seeing specific model codes such as X1E84100. And the updated information we have on Snapdragon X Elite now gives us details on three specific models. 84100 runs at 3.8 GHz, 8100 at 3.4 GHz, and 78100 also at 3.4 GHz but we can see the boost of 84100 and 8100 are different, while 78100 has no boost. We can also see the graphics are different in each of these three models, however the NPU for AI is the same. When it comes to Snapdragon Plus, at present there's one single model listed, the 64100. 10 cores, 3.4 GHz, no boost. 
and the graphics are in line with the weaker graphics in Snapdragon X Elite. The thing is, video cards told us about eight models of Snapdragon X quite some while ago. Four models of Elite, four models of Plus. It doesn't necessarily follow that Qualcomm will release all eight models, but it does seem rather likely. Also, Qualcomm asked us to not look too closely at the version of Windows 11 they were running, so naturally we did. However, we've edited this screen grab to blur out the precise version number. This emphasises the point that how Windows works on these laptops is of critical importance. We also understand that Intel has Lunar Lake coming later this year. That will have a much improved NPU compared to Meteor Lake and will also likely use Battlemage graphics. And are we surprised to learn that just before Computex, i.e. in a few weeks time, Intel is going to be holding an event about Lunar Lake. Clearly they want to give out the good news before we get to see more of Qualcomm's Snapdragon X in action. And let's round this off with a few quick pointers that I picked up at the Qualcomm briefing. There are three models of Elite and one of Plus that we've had announced so far, albeit we suspect more will follow. It would seem to me that the difference in cost to Qualcomm of those chips is minimal. And when you consider they all have the same 45 TOPS NPU and the same DDR memory, You'd think that the cost to laptop manufacturers for each of those models, there can't be a lot of differentiation. We have no clue at the moment what sort of price Lenovo or Asus will sell these laptops for. A thousand? Fifteen hundred? Two thousand? Don't know. Less than fifteen hundred seems to make sense to me. If they're under a thousand, then we're getting into really interesting territory. But right now we just don't know and how those uh, different SOCs will be differentiated across different laptops, again, don't know. What we picked up from the benchmarks is that Elite beats AMD, Intel and Apple M3 in chosen benchmarks, benchmarks chosen by Qualcomm, by around 20% and also better on power uh, draw, whereas Plus beats them by about 10%. Again, that's a really slender margin between Plus and Elite. But basically every Qualcomm chip beats the competition according to Qualcomm. We were also told devices will be on shelf in mid-2024. Well, that's when Computex is. Uh, we don't actually know when the launch is. We know that Qualcomm and their partners will be showing laptops at Computex. We haven't yet seen partner laptops. As to whether those are also launch dates, or whether that is a launch date, we don't yet know. So whether it's going to be, here are some shiny things and they're going to be coming in the next month, or whether here are some shiny things that have launched right now, don't know. And then Lunar Lake is due to follow on one or two quarters later. Uh, I'm working under the impression that Lunar Lake's coming at the very end of the year. The vibe from Intel is they want to get Lunar Lake out sooner than that, presumably to try and beat Snapdragon X to the punch. To which I say, well, good luck with that. On the other hand, we have every confidence that Intel chips will work very well with Windows. And right now we don't know uh, what's going to happen with ARM on Windows. Historically, that's been very tricky. Qualcomm is well aware of that point, how well they've rectified the situation uh, until we get review samples, we simply won't know. Initially, we expect to see clamshell laptops and two-in-one devices, i.e. conventional laptops and reversible screens and also fold-back screens. Uh, but the wording they used suggested that iPad-style tablets may follow. And that strikes me as very interesting. It's clear that Qualcomm is working through basically all the major software piece by piece. So the likes of Adobe, for example, are hugely important to them. And the recent news about Google Chrome is a big deal. It runs natively. It just works. However, utilities such as HW Info, GPU Z, CPU Z just don't work at the moment as we understand it. Uh, seemingly based on old code. 
so the only way we could actually see what the silicon was doing during benchmarks was to use task manager in windows that did appear to work correctly so it's definitely not a 100 percent coverage across the board in terms of software at the moment. We also asked Qualcomm whether the partners would be free to show off their own laptops on their own booths at Computex or would they only be showing them at Qualcomm's booth which would actually be in a separate hotel to the Nangang Exhibition Centre and they said the partners are free to do exactly whatever they like. Their laptops, they can do what they want with them. That means we can expect to see an awful lot of Qualcomm laptops all over Taipei during Computex and I can't wait to see how they perform, how they look, what features they pack, and how much they cost.